Okay, uh, let's move ahead. Another important part of uh, database I'd say is, is transactions. I think we discussed in the very first session and now let's discuss it in a detail. So what exactly is a transaction is? A transaction is a unit of work that is performed against a database. Uh, for example, if you're creating a record or updating a record or deleting a record from the table, then you're performing a transaction on the table. Uh, if you remember, I was talking about transaction and the acid compliance in the first, first session. So that's what we are gonna just revise here a little bit. Uh, if any, can, can anyone of you recall these properties, acid properties that we talked about? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, like, do you any do you remember acid properties? What each of these mean? Yeah, I have studied, but uh, don't remember everything. Uh, in no, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, so let, let me recall you that for you. So what you can do, uh, I mean, what exactly the acid compliance means is it's a short form, short form for atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Now, at all, what does that atomicity mean? It basically ensures that all the operations in that particular transaction are executed successfully. And the work that we were trying to do has been done. If at all, at any point, any failure occurs, it rollbacks everything to the previous point before the starting of the transaction. So let's say I want to add a new record, correct? There are 10 records already in the table. I'm, I'm trying to add 11th record in the table, but while adding that 11th record in the table, let's say database connectivity, connectivity issue happened, or let's say uh, internet connectivity or uh, some other, let's say storage issue happened, memory issue happened, something happened. And the transition that I was uh, trying to complete that is inserting a record was not able to complete. So atomicity ensures that rest 10 of the records remain as is within our system, within our memory, and nothing hampers that. That basically means atomicity. Consistency. That uh, it basically ensures that all the changes uh, to the state of the current state of the system has been done, are committed successfully. So our system is consistent uh, throughout. Uh, uh, you can take an example of consistency as, let's say, uh, there is a log table, which is maintaining as and when you are writing a record into a table. So uh, now you have inserted one record after 10 records, there is one more record that is 11th record. Now consistency ensures that the log table also has the record of it when and uh, who has written the log, uh, that particular record in that particular table at one time. So consistency ensures that all the aspects of a database are met with respect to a transaction. If so, um, I mean, whatsoever it is, irrespective of the number of tables involved or number of the system tables involved or anything at all. So our system has to be consistent every time with respect to our uh, current rules, rule set bias. So let's say there is no necessity to have a log table, but yeah, log table is there, there is a system log table which maintains that like who executed the last transaction in order to maintain all of these uh, transactions precisely. Now, the another property is isolation. Basically, we are, but whenever, let's say there are, there are two users who are trying to operate on the same table, right? There are 10 records already in it. Uh, Satish is writing, trying to write, write 11th record. And at the same time, Bhargav is also trying to write 11th record to that table but one of their record is supposed to be 12th, right? Because as soon as Satish has, Satish's record has entered that table, then that becomes 11th and then the Bhargav's one becomes 12th. So even if you are doing that at the same point of time, what does isolation ensure that both the transactions should happen individually, independently of each other. So that in case if Bhargav's transaction fail, it is uh, it, uh, Satish's transaction remain unimpacted. It can execute successfully 
or it can fail without any impact from Bhargav's transaction. So that isolation is really required when we are trying to uh, maintain the transaction level within a database. And last but not the least, we have the durability that, that basically ensure that result or effect of a committed transaction persists in case of a system failure. So let's say Satish has entered the 11th record, but now right after entering the record, the system has crashed. Durability ensures that once the transaction has been successfully executed, that record stays there forever unless and until someone explicitly deletes it. Okay, this, this is the asset compliance line whenever we talk about a transaction uh, within a database or generally in a RDBMS system. In NoSQL, uh, we don't generally refer to asset compliance. Any, any doubts here so far in asset compliance? Uh, just type no in the chat window or you can say as well, that, that will be fine. Okay, awesome. So I was using these two things very back and forth, commit and roll back. So there are basically three commands involved within the in order to handle a transaction properly. Commit, basically to save the changes. Roll back to revert the changes. Save point is to create a point within a group of transaction in which to roll back. So let's say there are multiple transactions that are, that are getting handled. So let's say you have written a stored procedure. Now that stored procedure is writing uh, hundreds of transactions at one point of time, right? So you can create a different save point that where would you like to go back? Would you like to roll back to all the way to the starting delete all the 100 transaction or would you like to roll back to only 50 transaction till we have written and would like, let's say if you have written 60, then just delete 10 and roll back till 15. Or basically you can create a different kind of checkpoints or save points to where you would like to uh, roll back the transaction or uh, have it reverted. So I would like you to, so generally in our current system, uh, I'd say, whenever you are creating stored procedure and you're inserting records, right? Uh, you use uh, these transaction handling mechanism that is commit rollback and save point. But otherwise in your day-to-day -day life, being a data analyst, uh, these uh, transaction handling schemes are not, are not used. So for someone who, who is doing the work of a DBA, database administrator, or who is doing a database developer, you can say, they'll be using it more often than a person who will be a data analyst, who will be utilizing the data to draw insights out of that. Any, any doubts in transactions? Any question at all? You can mention in the chat, else is no. No, okay, Margo, Hari as well. Okay, awesome. Now, if you remember, I was talking about auto increment field and I was just trying to build like increment function whether it is a keyword or not. So that I've also included and yeah. So basically that increment, auto increment thing happened uh, by identity function. So this identity function takes two arguments. One is the starting point. Another one is by how much you would like to uh, increment that you can see. So, Let's, let's create this table.
So currently this is empty. Let's try to insert this record and let's see what happens. Now let's say I make it two at 26. Yeah, it will tell me what is the difference between in the earlier when we wrote the insert statement and now what I'm writing the insert statement. What is the difference between those two? Bhargo? Uh, so you are asking what is the difference? Yeah. Um, between this and which one? Uh, when we were writing uh, insert statement earlier for this employee table, right? Okay, I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll focus it now. So if you remember earlier when we were providing ID, ID, age, we need to provide all the three arguments. But now since yeah, I have set this ID, ID, yeah, it's I'm not giving ID, right? It is auto increment. Yes, it is giving it on its own. Since I've set it seed value or the starting value to one and the increment value to one. So it will start with one and it will increment that value by one. Now let me do this the other way around. Let's say drop table into and now let's create this into again. Instead of seed value, I'm giving it as 10. And let's say I'm giving this time as an, an increment of let's take off 20 okay so the now the value should start with 10 and should increment by 20 correct let's create this db and let's add my id one again and to well, 26 so now our first employee id with age 25 should have a id value as 10 and the next employee id that is 2 with h26 should have an employee id of 30 10 plus 20 right let's see if that is the case or not any doubts no okay awesome all good i think that's pretty much it to tell about uh auto increment